Wow, man, that's a trailer for Quantum Leap. The Revival. Quantum Leap is here on Mondays at 10 p.m. on NBC. We have to start, DB. I wonder if you can do the honors, man. I know, I feel like, you know, this guy has been played such a major role in all of our lives yeah. through, through, through his work. Facts. Ever since Heather, what was the character you fell in love with? <laughs> Don't do that. Go my, ahead. my uncle watched Penitentiary too, and I knew about Half Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so embarrassed saying that in front of him, but no, it was no, just half, awesome. I just remember that watching. Half Dead is a folk hero, folklore. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Half Dead. But DB, let them know who we got in the room with us real quick. Well, if you ask me who my favorite Ghostbuster is, it's easy because my grandfather's name was Winston. And uh. so... You know, you are the unsung hero of the Ghostbusters, but also my favorite. And, um, you know, today is a special day. You're here to talk about Quantum Leap, the reboot, which is airing now. But wow. Ghostbusters fans, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed is available today. The video game is also out dropping today. Wow. So we have something else to celebrate with our guests who's with us right now. The returning very important citizen, the VIC. we got to bring that term back as well. He's yes. been here a bunch of times. We love him. Ernie Hudson, he's back. Ernie Hudson. Thank you. Thank you. So the, it's a video game? It is. There's a, video, there's a lot of, uh, there's actually one video game that dropped today, the Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, and then there's the VR game, which, um, you know, we were talking oh, about the, the Oculus, cool. so they yes. made a VR version where you can actually feel like you're in the environment, chasing ghosts, Whoa. and, you know, busting make you feel good. Yo, man. <laughs> hey, Ernie, how, 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 did you negotiate something good for that video game? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, everybody's, uh, you know, they treat me nice, and I'm just for smiling and very happy. <laughs> and, yeah. I collected checks. <laughs> really? You know, yeah, I know. It's not like the first one where I'm I'm looking at him being angry. I'm uh, I'm happy now. So you know, life is good. And Amen. Just, good man. Yeah. Just giving er thanks every day. Ernie Hudson is happy. That's what's yeah. up. That's Ernie Hudson <laughs> should be happy. You put in the work, and it's just nice to be able to just enjoy it. You know, like just enjoy it. And people from all ages now, like what I'm talking about, Penitentiary. DB is talking about, you know, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. You know, there's shows on BET that we watch. Like it's just amazing to see. Well, so, yeah, it's a blessing. I, you know, I started out 50, my son is 57, so I started before he was born. Wow, and uh, yeah, just over the years, just plugging away. And now it seems to be sort of all falling in place in mm. a wonderful way. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just giving thanks. Six giving thanks. Decades. How important now is, is, as we say, the bag is the money? How important? Well, you know, I think you have to reach a point in life where you realize uh, how much is enough. Okay. Because mm. you ain't never going to get that big bag of all of it. You know what I'm saying? So I just gave up on that. I ain't even worried about that. But I got enough to do whatever I need to do. Whatever you better. I do, Come on, you know? man. So, uh, That's yeah. You know? uh, 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 I, I think money is as long as you can get enough to keep moving so it doesn't stop you. You know, when your car breaks down and you can't get it fixed, then you stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So nothing stops me from moving in the direction I want to move in. Wow. It's also bananas to me that your son is 57, but you look 57. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it bothers my son, too. But, uh, <laughs> she should be happy. That's, you know, that's epigenetics. It's going to pass to him, too, right? Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I have four sons. They're all really amazing. And, uh, yeah, no, and once again, I think it's just a, a blessing to be able to, my grandmother would say, you know, just don't do the stupid stuff. And if you're going to be an old black man, be an old black man with some money. You know, who's be an old black man who's healthy as opposed to not healthy. You know, be an old black man who's positive as opposed to angry. Yes. So, you know, you just want to reflect the best of, you know, you believe in God and show that. Mm. You ever been tired? You know, like this has been a, a narrative that's been introduced to our conversation about black men. And a lot of times we ask each other, how you doing? And we say, okay. You know, yeah, but yeah. You, you you ever been tired and said okay anyway? No, you know I I lost three friends during this whole COVID thing, and each of them said, "Man, I'm I'm just tired," uh, just before they died. So uh, I, I'm not tired yet. Okay, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I yeah no I I just uh, and I don't I think you have to listen to your body. I mean, at times when I wake up and I'm a little stiff, I'm a little sore, but I'm like, uh, okay, what do you want to tell me? But now that you said that, uh, we got to move on. So I don't really feel, I don't feel, you know, diminished okay. in any mm -hmm. way. Even mm -hmm. though I know I'm, I'm, I'm looking at 77 in another month or so, but Beautiful. I just feel, yeah, like I'm wow. ready to, to keep moving. 
and um, you know whatever you haven't done career wise, you just need to make peace with. Uh, mm. Boy, you know, <laughs> just go. Right. Maybe that ain't going to happen. You know, I think the hardest part of getting older for me is just realizing that uh, I'm I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I look at people like Martin Luther King and people who did some amazing, you know, Malcolm X, and I go, okay, well, I'm not that guy. Mm-hmm. So maybe I need to make peace with the guy that I am mm-hmm. and uh, and love that. Did you ever get a chance to meet Martin Luther King or Malcolm X? Or No, no, I never did. You know, uh-huh. I was so, like a lot of people, so caught up with just, uh, you know, I was a single dad trying to, you know, get the rent, trying to keep the car running, trying mm-hmm. to keep the phone on. You know, a lot of things going on, but I just need to focus on this, trying to figure out how I'm going to get on stage, how I'm going to do yeah. what I need to do. So, um, uh, no, I never, uh, yeah. You never had the chance, right? Yeah. So we're trying to do, well, I was trying to do the math, and I'm thinking, my goodness, this man has been blessed to be working in this industry for six decades, a little over six decades. And even with us doing music and being in radio every day, we've seen so much and yeah. we've learned, you know, coming from a particular era of music, how to be welcoming to some of the younger right. artists that come yeah. in and not necessarily push off their music, push off their message, push off right. their voice. Um, for you watching so much change in the industry and actors only work with actors and now seeing rappers and everything come into it. Sure. Have you been welcoming as well and in, in the digital platforms and everything? Yeah, I mean, there's so much I don't understand even though I try to. <laughs> I, I mean, I really try, you know what I mean? I, I bought a car and I don't know how to raise the volume up. You know what I mean? I'm so frustrated <laughs> that way. It's on but, the steering uh, wheel, Ernie. Yeah, I know, you know, but what I didn't know is you need to slide it. You can't just tap the dog on. But, but uh, yeah, no, some wonderful thing, things that 20 years ago I never would have believed. I mm-hmm. mean, we're at a place now, and I think we really need to appreciate the advances because there are a lot of advances, and we're in places uh, to be able to now do it on our own accord without permission. So uh, I'm excited, and anything yeah. I can do to encourage, to um, you know, to incentivize, to mm-hmm. help, uh, you want to do that. You mm-hmm. you definitely because it 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 is the future, and it's a future that I'll probably never see. But I'm so happy when I see something positive yeah. because there's so much negative around that you kind of go, oh my God, I I can't focus on that because. Yeah. That will make me tired, you uh-huh. know. Uh-huh. So, but I see people coming in, being creative. You guys being here doing this program, uh-huh. you know, inviting me to, to come on and talk. Um, that's 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 amazing to me, you know. Wow. Um, and stories. I mean, our stories are changing, and we're getting closer to being able to tell our story, the true yes. stories, you know. That uh-huh. um, because the truth will, you know, set you free, and that's what mm. I, I look forward to. Ernie Hudson, man, we're talking about Quantum Leap Mondays at 10 p.m. on NBC DB. Yeah, I wanna um, I wanna talk about Quantum Leap and Ghostbusters, but I'm gonna tie it together because if you <laughs> if you really look at Ghostbusters and the fact that that movie was successful is almost like lightning in a bottle. You had four grown men in flight suits chasing ghosts around New York City, saving it from a marshmallow man, you know, to trying to destroy the roof of an apartment building. If you were to explain that plot to somebody before the film came out, they probably would have thought like, "There's no way this movie is gonna work." Right. Not only did it work, it became successful, had spinoffs, you know sequels and everything like that merchandise uh, animated shows and everything so as an actor when you look at all that success that came from something that you know could have failed just as easily right. does it make you look at everything you've done after that as like wow is this going to be another like runaway hit that nobody saw coming or d- did it make you sort of choose your project a little more carefully because of the amount of success that came from Ghostbusters well Ghostbusters I mean, it had this huge success but it didn't necessarily um, translate in my world you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm you sort of moving along, and then you get this big hit, and you think, oh, my God, the world's going to open up, and the world doesn't open up, and you kind of go, oh, my God, all this stuff is happening, but it's not filtering down to me. So, mm. you know, how do I hold on? I'm happy that the studio's making money, but how do I fit in here? You know, I'm signing autographs on posters that I'm not on. So you kind of have to get, you know, but how do I stay? You know, how do I keep the faith? How do I keep moving forward? You know, and in time, now it shows up. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I got a thing from Jason Reitman, the um, the son of Ivan Reitman, right. who directed Rest the last peace. film, you know, and he says, Ernie, you, Winston Zeddemore is a patriarch of Ghostbusters as we move forward. Well, that's, I'm happy we got to that place. It took 40 years to get there, but uh-huh. uh, but if I look back 40 years ago, I, I couldn't have imagined that. But it's always great to be in a, a hit, you know, that uh-huh. people like, you know, people... 
get excited about. You know, it's always good because a lot of films, you know, the penitentiary twos don't necessarily hit that market. Yeah. You know, the human <laughs> tornadoes and, you know. You know so. It was a hit in the hood. <laughs> Can you name all your titles? <laughs> <laughs> it was a hit in the hood. That's yeah. a different kind of hit. It was. You, you, you've been on like over, what, two, 200, 250 screens? Yeah. yeah. No, I've been, uh, it's been a long time. But no, I, I had an argument a few days ago with a guy, not an argument, but he told me, he said, I really loved you in that movie. And he started describing it. It was, it was some uh, movie I'd made, Air Force One or something. And uh, I said, no, no, I wasn't in that. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, 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 no, you were. And I said, no, no, I wasn't. He said, are you sure? He said, because I remember you came in the room and, and then he started describing it. And I thought, oh, my God, yeah, I was in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so that, many. that, that comes wow. to point. And then you get the other side. I, I, I took uh, the car in from the airport. And the uh, the driver was saying, "Oh man, I love you so much, man. You changed my life. You know that um, uh, uh, who was in it? Um, Carl Carl um, Carl and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Carl Predator. Weathers. Carl Weathers. Yeah, Carl Predator, Weathers. Yeah. Said, oh man, said so you did the Predator, and I just man, you just did. and I didn't have the heart to say, man, I wasn't in that movie. You know." <laughs> <laughs> so he was uh, was it I, maybe I don't know who thought I was. Oh, so, I see you now. I see you. I see you. Yeah, he said you changed my life, man. He said I, you know, and I'm, and I thought he would let it go, but the whole <laughs> way from the airport, he talked about my performance in this movie that I really was not in, but that's that's okay. <laughs> Ernie Hudson is here, man. Okay, big round of that's crazy. Quantum Leap first came out when. Uh, was it the late 80s? 1989. 89, okay, yeah. We're in 2022. Um, your character is the head of the Quantum Leap um, time travel project, right? Right, yeah. Back then, did you believe Quantum Leap was possible? Time travel was possible? Uh, about as much as I believe it is now. <laughs> I mean, you know, we haven't got to that place, yeah. but I like the idea of the possibilities, you know, to leap back. How does that work? Yeah. I mean, I still, when I I ask myself questions, then I kind of go, you know, leave it alone, say the <laughs> lines, and just do this job, and hopefully it'll last, because I don't think too deep on it, yeah. you know, because I'm like, well, where's his body at? And uh, <laughs> who's he leaping into? You know what I mean? Right. I, so I just go, you don't even, That's don't, a good question. don't go there, you know what I mean? Just... Just enjoy it, and uh, but the possibilities—that's what sci-fi does. You know, yeah. sci-fi takes us to a place where we kind of go, "Oh wow, that's if that could happen." If and some things have, yeah, you know, come through. So maybe you know, at some point, we'll be able to leap into. I love the idea that it, the whole human spirit, because I think we're beings first and foremost. And so he, in fact, that in the upcoming episode, he leaps into a black lady. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to leap and crossing genders and race and all that opens us up to possibilities that, you know, if we could have seen things from a different perspective, that's what excites me about it. But in terms of time and, you know, unless we believe in alternate universes, yeah, then I go, okay, then it's possible. I see you've been mm -hmm. down this spiral. I do. So I went through it for years, so I just uh, was curious to what you thought about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alternate yeah. universes. Quantum physics. Parallel maybe. universes. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's another Ernie Hudson somewhere else right now having yep. this conversation with a white me. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, with Way? Um, <laughs> yeah. his name Way? His name is Way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. You can see that? <laughs> yeah. I can't. All right, so look, we're going to have you do this thing we call we call the mystery sack. Heather, can you explain this to Ernie? Yes, there are some questions in here from our citizens who listen to this show. Okay. We put them in Sway's little sack. You have to dig in. Oh. Answer three. Okay. Eat okay. One at a time. Hold on, let's hit the intro. <laughs> Go ahead and reach in. Dig deep, dig deep. <laughs> Put your hands into Sway's sack. That sounds gross. <laughs> it's Sway's mystery sack on Shade 45. Okay. I want to apologize to Ernie Hudson for that intro right there. Yeah, yeah. Do, do so I, three questions, I'm one bad. at a time. You okay. have to read them out loud, and you got to answer honestly. Do I need mm. uh, sanitizer? Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> In a un another universe, your sack ain't a sparkly Sway. <laughs> <laughs> It's very sparkly. So. And manscaping. Yeah. Just, just okay. smooth. What's a hobby or interest you have that would possibly surprise most folks? Um, geez, I don't know. I, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, 
meditate. I don't know if that's a hobby. Okay. Um, okay, okay. You know, I, I I love watches. Mm-hmm. I, I'm afraid to mention because of people you know, <laughs> robbing people of watches, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Watches is interesting. You got yeah. like four of them on right now. You do? Like. Yeah. No. I, well, this is my computer, <laughs> oh. but that uh, right, your yeah, Apple Watch. The okay. Apple Watch is a computer that, that does everything my computer does, and the other watch is just a watch. That I, I love watches, so you know. You don't need to be concerned about people robbing you, man. Uh, well, okay. hey, that's what I thought too. But Question number okay. two. That watch is nice. I ain't gonna, nice. gonna, gonna push it. Okay. Um, so, uh, question number two: Have you ever had to work with someone who was drunk or high on the job? How did you handle it? Mm-hmm. Um, I always assume nobody is high, and that is probably it's a, it's a wrong assumption because yeah, I've worked with a lot of people who are like out of their minds. <laughs> And I was trying to figure out personality-wise. No, they were just high, you know. And um, so, yeah, you know, I tried that once. I, I got high and uh, had to go on stage, and it was the worst experience of my life. So, wow, you couldn't remember uh, the line? I, I, yeah, I, did, I couldn't remember where I was. I didn't know if I had said the line or if I was I supposed to say the line or was it, it was, coke? What did you do? Uh, no, marijuana? it was just no marijuana. I can't. I don't react well to marijuana. marijuana. You know okay. what I mean? It's just really kind of, kind of heavy and I, I i went on an audition once i was high and <laughs> and i and i i was i was so messed up i thought everybody knew and so i started apologizing for the fact that i was it's so no oh you snitched on yourself I, yeah i just uh, yeah no i did not <laughs> I already hunted on don't, crack don't do well don't, don't do, well. do well you know no. <laughs> I, I know what not to get you for christmas <laughs> yeah, no. get that watch Sway. <laughs> <Get them. laughs> So, what are some of your favorite perks that come with being in Hollywood? Oh. Um, well, I think I love the fact that um, you know people don't normally um, ask me for you know money or things like that, but just sometimes just a, a encounter changes. It seems to change their moment. You know, I, mean, mm-hmm. I can see somebody on the street who's just having a rough day, look like, or they're down or whatever, and they'll see me and they'll kind of go, oh my God, and their spirits would lift, and suddenly it's like, man, I can't believe this, and, you know, wait till I tell my mama I saw you, she gonna Amen. be so, you yeah. know, and uh, and that uh, that's kind of a blessing to be able to do that without, yeah, just, you know. I love that, man. Give Ernie Hudson a round of applause, man. Real quick, Didi is in Chicago. Heather, I know you gotta go to Good, Urban View. Listen to Didi, go ahead. Okay, Didi is in Chicago. Go ahead, Didi. Hey, Didi. Hey, how's hey. everybody? Hi, Didi. I, hi. Um, so the connect, the little connection that we have is that my cousin, he's a distant cousin of mine, is Ray Parker Jr., ah. who sang the Ghostbusters theme song. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't met him, but he was real close to my grandfather and my great grandfather. Ah, yeah. Well, you know, I have met him. He's a he's a good friend. I, I love Ray. He's a really just a very very special dude, and um, I'm, uh, he's made so much money on Ghostbusters that theme song that uh, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, yeah. It Raise a just really very very special. So, hey, can you tell him Didi <laughs> says hi? <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Yeah, because, 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 you know right. what? Yeah, I, I'll, I will definitely try tell him that. I have to write it down so I remember. But uh, yeah, I'll try to pass it on, Didi. That um, you know that and is can family. Can I also you say know. that um, you are you are black excellence? Because being a Ghostbuster and myself being a black nerd, blur, you being a Ghostbuster, like, that is iconic ah. for the black community. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That uh, that means a lot. Really, I, I appreciate you saying that. Didi, you have a beautiful day. You're a citizen. I'm a glad we made this connection. Morning. All right. Let's you give it a big round. Thank oh, you. All right. Quantum Leap Air and Mondays at not, uh, 10 p.m., 9 p.m. Central Woo! on NBC. <laughs> Ernie Hudson, it's always a pleasure, yes. a thrill to have you on this show, man. Thank you so much, guys, for it. It's always great to be here. I just really appreciate you guys and admire and love what you're doing. So just keep it up and, you know, all the best to you.